Oh my god, was I not talking? I was I was talking that whole time, chat. I'm boosted. Okay, basically, she sends out a dog. It'll grab onto a survivor, and it will drag you towards the killer, and it will hinder you. If you escape without getting injured, you will get hindered, and if you do get injured, then uh, then you don't get hindered, I'm assuming. You can send the dog out to search, and as it travels more distance, the search radius gets bigger, and if you are on the path, it increases the movement speed of the path. Or increases your movement speed, so kind of like how night works a little bit. Uh, special effect, Hound Sense. Healthy survivors affected by Hound Sense receive deep wounds when injured. Injured survivors affected by Hound Sense suffer from louder grunts of pain and longer pools of blood when put into the dying state. He's trying to fuck your streak. Okay, what's what's happening? Your audio is gone, bud. He fell asleep. P2B isn't as important as your health. Who the fuck is this person streaming before 3 p.m.? Why would I want a dog killer when Dracula become the dog itself? No, yeah, I know. We're, we're going to see how the killer plays out. I'm also going to test out all the other stuff. I'm going to try and get footage. I'm going to need survivors survivors to play, but I might just use bots, honestly. like I usually use bots anyways. PTB is halfway downloaded, although I'm not going to do it until we look at the patch notes. Um. Okay. Perks. I heard her perks were good. So, all shaking thunder. After you fall from a height, your lunge attack distance is increased by 75% for 16 seconds. Wait, can you pair this with coup to have a, a giga coup? This perk has a 5 second cooldown. Interesting. <laughs> a giga coup? That's a, that's a funny perk. Scorge oh, another Scorge hook perk. We haven't had a new Scorge hook perk in like 2-3 two, two, years, chat. It's been a while, so I'm happy to see one. Jagged Compass. At the start of the trial, up to four random hooks are changed into Scorch hooks. You see the auras in white. When a survivor is unhooked from a non from a non-scorch hook, it becomes a scourge hook. When you hook a survivor on a scourge hook, the aura of the generator with the most progress is revealed in yellow for 10 seconds. Wait, that's so interesting. That's a really interesting perk. So you can create more Scourge Hooks. When a survivor is unhooked from a non-Scourge Hook, it becomes a Scourge Hook. That's going to be insane with Pain Res. Plus, it's going to show you when you hook a survivor on a Scourge Hook, the aura of the generator. So you can sacrifice if you don't need the 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 aura reveal, right? You don't want to like have the aura reveal. You can sacrifice hooking a survivor on a non-Scourge Hook to create another Scourge Hook in the future. And then you can also use it to kind of see, you could pair this with pain res, right? So you pain res a gen, and then it also highlights the gen that got pain res in yellow. No quarter. When a survivor reaches 75% of a self heal, so self heal, they are faced with continuous skill checks. If one of these skill checks is missed or the heal is interrupted, the survivor becomes broken for 30 seconds. Oh my god. It's merciless storm for healing, but only self heals. I think. I think they're going to make it have a cooldown and then it's going to they're going to put a cooldown on it and then they're going to make it work for all heals. I think that's what they should do for it cuz a self heal is too specific. New survivor Tori Kane. Perks invoke Oh, we got another invocation perk. Okay. Treacherous crows when in the basement near the circle. When in the basement near the circle, press the ability button to begin the invocation. Invocations take 60 seconds. Okay, so they're made at the same time as Sables. Other survivors will see your aura during this and can join on ongoing interaction. Once the invocation is completed, completing the invocation disables that perk for all survivors. You become injured and broken for the rest of the trial, so just like Sables. So it has to be a strong effect then. When a survivor is in the terror radius and the killer scares a crow, their aura is revealed to all survivors for two seconds. Treacherous crows. Wait, what? When any survivor? Oh. When any survivor is in the terror radius of the killer and the killer scares a crow. Wait, but the killers are going to constantly be scaring crows. This is just going to give all survivors in the match wall hacks. Because it doesn't just apply it to you, it applies it to everybody. Interesting. Clean break. After you finish healing another survivor while being healed by another survivor, press the ability button 
one to become broken. After 60 seconds, you become healthy. Oh, so it's another, like, auto-heal perk. It's like the opposite of For the People. After you finish healing another survivor... After you finish healing another survivor while being healed by another survivor, press... So, it's only after you finish healing another survivor. If they start healing you, then you press the button, and then you get healed. This perk does not activate if you are already broken. The effect is cancelled if you go into the dying state. Okay. Shoulder the burden... Oh god, I already know, I already know what this, remember Oddstarva made a video talking about a burden status effect? Once per trial, as long as you are not on death hook, press the ability button 2 in front of a hooked survivor to unhook them. When they are un unhooked, they lose one hook state and you gain one hook state. You also scream and become exposed for 20 seconds. Oh my god. Oh my god. They just created the most insane anti-tunnel perk that's ever that's ever been made. That's an insane perk. This one's already interesting. This is like Moment of Glory. It's like an interesting niche perk. This one's niche, but it's also really strong because wall hacks for all survivors. This one lets you untunnel a survivor. You can remove a hook state from your teammate. Got my wisdom teeth yanked and the other one fucked. Boosted. 49 pain meant. Once per trial, as long as you are not on death hook. So you can only get this if you are on first hook or no hooks. And then you do this. Press the ability button two in front of a hook survivor to unhook them. When they are unhooked. Front of a hook survivor to unhook them. When they are unhooked, they lose one hook state in you. So you can unhook someone on second hook. And then when, when they get unhooked, they'll only have one hook stage. And then you, then the killer will have to hook them again. And then the killer is going to have to hook them again to kill them. Wait, but what if all, all what if your whole team is running this? If they're just trying to tunnel the same person, what if you just, like, just keep... <laughs> There's... We have to try it, right? What if we make it so we hook the... Like, it's just a clip, right? And we have four people running this perk. And we're just going to have the clip. It'll be like three Leons and then one Dwight. And we'll just hook the Dwight like five times and show him not dying. And you guys will just keep giving hook <laughs> states. That's so broken. If you're tunneling, you can just tunnel the exposed guy. When they are unhooked, you gain one hook state. You also scream and become exposed. Oh, so you scream. So the killer is aware of who gave the hook state away. The killer is aware of who got the hook state, and you get exposed for 20 seconds, so you can get an instant out on that person. Okay. So it's it, it prevents you from doing it as a pure one-for-one. One. It is a very risky one-for-one. One. Like stealing balloons? Yeah, it's like a free life. Do you want me on the PTB? Yeah, probably. This there's it's not only is this a new killer, insane new survivor perks. And then the new map. A new map on the on the other side of Mount Ormond is here for testing on the PTB. Explore the Ormond Lake Mine. This map will not be part of the chapter release. What? They're releasing a new map, but it's not even gonna come out. Off to help you with making content on the video. Um well, how many people are we going to have? If we can have a four stack, but I don't want to, like, drag you all. I would need four. Four survivors. Maybe we can get broken in here. I, I know Doobie said he was downloading it, but I know you probably want to make your own content for it, right, Doobie? <laughs> I, don't, I wouldn't want to, like, drag you in here. Plus, you probably want to play the killer, too. Yeah, that's dumb. The new map won't be coming with it. But let's see the other stuff, okay? We'll look at the killer updates in a second. Survivor activity HUD improvements. All activities will now surface their progress on the activity HUD. Previously was just generators and recovery. Okay, I'm hoping this shows the anti-camp meter. I'm really hoping it shows the anti-camp meter. A new activity was created to differentiate when a survivor is mending or healing themselves. Um, a new activity was created to differentiate when a survivor is blessing a totem. So cleansing and blessing is different. Mending and healing is different. 
Some killer power interactions, which were previously missing, are now included on the activity HUD. Okay. Perks HUD improvement. Visual differentiation between a perk being temporarily unavailable from being disabled completely. Okay, so if your hex totem gets temporarily unavailable. Because sometimes devour will be unavailable because you're near the hook, right? But you can't tell if it's actually broken or not. First time implementation for new invocation perk. Okay. Characters bio pages. Re-added power and perks previews on the bio page that's good featured page main carousel can also display bundles featured page bundle widget is now a carousel that shows bundles and collections okay it's my chucky and drag first yeah you know you can do that thing we'll be chilling where i'm literally probably yeah yeah okay dracula increase shape shift cooldown to 3.5 seconds okay there we go chat i this is exactly what i said 3.5 is the is the uh 3.5 is the middle ground. I thought it was gonna be four, so this is best case scenario. 3.5. Uh he increase hellfire cooldown to 10 seconds was seven. Okay. That'll make it more punishing if you miss. I think that's fine. Uh Wolf Form. Increase the spawn rate of scent orbs to one every five seconds. So they made the green add-on base kit, because that's exactly what the 17% did. Decrease Wolf Pound's charge time to 0 0.85. Wait, this is fine. Dracula's fine. This is really good changes. This is really good changes. They nerfed Hellfire to be a longer cooldown, which is fine because he has two cooldown add-ons that are already really strong. They did the shapeshift cooldown um, to 3.5 seconds instead of 2.5. I already thought that was going to happen, so I thought it was going to be 4 seconds, but... That's a perfect change. I like that change. I think the Hellfire change is good. And even on top of that, they buffed Wolf Form. I thought they were going to nerf bat speed down to 6 meters per second again from 6.5. Um, I'm happy they kept it, though, because it did feel kind of slow at 6 meters per second. So the 6.5 is, is good. It's the same speed as Victor, although Victor can still go faster than that with speed add-ons. So Victor is still different. Um, I've... They didn't change anything about the shapeshift, like how fast he shapeshifts, so you're still going to be able to get hits at windows with that form, which is nice. It'll just be a lot harder because you have a longer cooldown. Let's see what they do to Demogorgon. Decrease portal setting time to 0 0.85 seconds. Okay. Decrease portal entry time. Okay, that's good. Because that was the clunkiest part of Demogorgon, right? The clunkiest part of Demo was setting up the portals and how long it took to enter them. I think this is good. Uh, increase upside down travel speed to 28. Oh my goodness. I don't know. There was someone in here yesterday who said they were a Demogorgon main, remember? And they said, I hope they make um, Deer Lung, which is Demogorgon's add on to make him travel faster in his portal. They were hoping to make that add on base kit. They gave it 8 meters per second base kit. That's a really good demo buff. I love this change. Oh, and add on changes. Okay. Increases the ceiling time of portals by 10% was 16, so they're nerfing these. Increases the area of effect of portals by 1 meter. Increases the ceiling time by 8% was 11. Upside down resin. Increases the ceiling time of portals by 20% was 28. I don't think these need nerfs. This is unnecessary. Just keep these buffs. Why are you nerfing these niche add-ons that no one uses anyways? They aren't touching Drax purple Anna. Oh my god, you're right. Oh my god, they're keeping Medusa's hair. I just completely went over that fact. I think this is great. These are great changes for Dracula. The wolf charge pounce time being being quicker is great. Him getting him getting the scent orbs back is great. Um, I think it's a huge mistake to keep Medusa's hair the way it is. Either reduce the hindered or my personal... Uh, what I would like is make it so when you teleport to a window, the survivors within 12 meters screen, because then you can know where they are if they're hiding. I think that would be how I prefer it, because that would be a really good purple add-on still without being as problematic as like a free clown bottle. Uh, new lifeguard whistle reveal survivors near active portals without charging of the abyss removed increases the number of portals by two. No, why? This was such a fun add-on. This was like a totem build Demogorgon. I guess they didn't want the totem build anymore. Yeah, we'll look at Chucky. Decrease night, uh, night Shroud cooldown to 17 seconds. Pog. Decreases the time to mark survivors by 4.5 seconds. Was 5. Damn. Okay. 
So they gave him partial of his two best brown add-ons base kit. To increase the time to mark survivors by 10% was 20. To increase his nitron recovery time by 3 seconds. Okay. So they made it base kit. So you can run other add-ons, I guess. Okay. Interesting. Wait, they buffed Chucky. They buffed Chucky. Decreases the scamper time to one second was 1.3. So you're going to be able to hit scamper hits. Increased Heidi Ho mode cooldown to 12 seconds was 10. Yeah, I, that's fine. I'll take it. I'll take that. <laughs> I'll take that. And then they nerfed rat poison. Decreased range to 6 meters was 12. Decreased duration to 2.5. Okay, yeah, that's good. So they didn't even change the effect. They just, they made it more fair. They made it so it doesn't linger, which, it wasn't even the range. It was the lingering that was broken. Because it was after the hit, you'd see their aura for so long, right? So this is fine. Prage Vecna. Prage. Okay, this is good. They, I thought, because what they had done, right, for Vecna... They decided they were going to give all of his cooldowns 38 seconds. And I was like, certain spells that are weaker should have shorter cooldowns, right? Okay, so Dispelling Sphere's cooldown, 35 seconds, was 38. That's good. Flight of the Dams, 35 seconds, was 38. So they're giving partial cooldowns to base kit. To increase Fly's cooldown to 25 seconds, that's perfect. Because it's just like a, mo a movement mobility, right? Increase Mage Hand's cooldown to 40 seconds. Interesting. Uh, increase the cooldown after canceling a spell to 1.25 seconds was 1. Okay. Interesting. I don't think I'm I don't think anybody's gonna notice this, so that's fine. Decrease the time to spelling sphere disables magic items to 45 seconds was 60. Yeah, I don't I don't think that's gonna matter. Because 45 seconds is still long if you're in a chase, right? Like, the chase is not going to last 45 seconds. And even if the chase does last longer than 45 seconds, it's a 35-second cooldown just reapply a Dispelling Spear. You know? So this is exa this is what we wanted. We wanted base kit uh, spell buffs. So this I like these changes. I really like the fly one. I think this is should be 35 as well i don't know what they're thinking there mage hand is not like some overwhelmingly overpowered ability i think that should be 35 as well i think everything else is fine uh pearl decreases the power of all spells by three seconds after a successful was five okay uh increase the cooldown of spells by two seconds was four okay i think they should keep these unnerfed honestly i think these should stay unnerfed Um, okay. Mastermind base kit. Decrease violent birds cooldown to 5.5 seconds. Okay. They didn't remove Wesker's hug tech chat. <laughs> you know what exactly what I said? I said, I'm going to showcase all the killer changes, but like, say Wesker just gets like faster cooldown base kit. I'm not going to showcase that. And I said that as my example. And look at, <laughs> look at what they did. Exactly. You remember how I was saying if it imagine they just do that? They did exactly that. Which is good, because it was kind of a long cooldown, not gonna lie. Okay, Mookle, what do you get? After after since 2016, he hasn't he hasn't gotten changed. Increased evil within one movement speed to 4.4. Oh, so he's a 110 in stealth. Okay. Increased maximum stock per survivor to twenty they doubled it. That's crazy good. That's crazy good. It already felt like it took a while to get someone to max stock. The fact that it's doubled now is going to be really good. Um, decrease the amount of evil within required to reach uh, evil within 2 to 3 was 5. Oh, yeah. So you're going to get out of that really quickly. Increase the evil. Wait, this is going to make Scratch Mirror really strong because you're going to be 110. Um, increase the evil within gain multiplier when stalking from afar to 1 was 0 0.1. Wait, so now there's no more penalty. If you stalk from far away, it does just as much as stalking up close. So they basically reworked the penalty. Uh, decrease the evil within game multiplier when stalking from up close 
to 0 0.4 was 1. Wait. So you had to stalk from far away? You have to stalk from far away now? Just like standing in the distance, but if you're up close, it's going to be slower. That makes it worse because he already gets a faster cooldown, more survivors infected. Oh yeah, I forgot that was a I forgot that was a passive of Wesker. Um it's only half a second though per survivor, right? Okay, let's see what they did to this stuff. Evil within three requirement to twenty was ten for a fragrant tuft of hair. Lock of hair decreased it by fifty percent was one hundred percent. Oh, so they buffed lock of hair. Um, okay. That's cool. Judith's Tombstone. Increase the evil within 3 requirement to 20 was 10. Okay. Um, that makes sense because they buffed the maximum stock per survivor. So they need to increase, they need to increase Tombstone to make up for that. Otherwise you'd be able to proc Tombstone way too many times and you Tombstone all of them. Uh, Tombstone Peace. Increase the, they are, they aren't nerfing Tombstone. They're keeping Tombstone in the game. I'm actually shocked by that. I'm not going to lie. Out of all the things I, I thought was going to happen to Myers, I thought he was going to get one, 110, 115 in stealth. And I thought they were going to remove Tombstone. And they kept it. They just made it so it takes slightly longer to charge. That's crazy. Scratch Mirror decreases evil within one movement speed to 4.2. Oh, okay. So Scratch Mirror, you're still 105. <laughs> Just to scare people. Okay, I was going to say 110 Scratch Mirror would probably be a little too strong. <laughs> oh, and then I forgot Killer killer Perk changes. Okay, let's see. Let's see if, they, if they've if they done anything else. Killer Perk updates dominance the first time each totem and... Oh, First time each totem and chest is interacted with by a survivor, that totem or chest is blocked by the entity for 16 seconds was 8. That's a good change, because 8 was horrible. Human Greed. You can see unopened chest auras and survivors auras are revealed for 3 seconds when they enter an 8 meter range. You also gain the ability to kick chest close, uh, chest to close them. This ability has a 20, 20 second close. Wait, so they just buffed the perk I was already having fun with. <laughs> The only, the only thing I didn't like about this perk was, yes, if they opened up the chest, you couldn't actually see the chest aura anymore. And so sometimes I would forget where the chest was. So what this change is going to do is going to make it so you can have an easier time closing the chest again. I think that's good. I already like this perk. I was kind of hoping they buffed the range to 12 meters because of how situational the chests already are. But, you know, beggars can't be choosers. Languid Touch. When a survivor within 36 meters of you scares a crow, they gain the exhausted sound effect for 10 seconds. This perk has a 5 second cooldown. Was a 20 second cooldown. Damn, so they buffed it. I guess they buffed it to be on par with genetic limits, right? Weave Attunement. The, the nerf, long-awaited nerf. When any item becomes depleted for the first time each match, it is dropped. You see the auras of dropped items. Survivors within 8 meters of dropped items have their auras revealed to you was 12. I said they were going to do that. Affected survivors see the item's aura. When a survivor picks up a survivor item, they suffer blue status effect for 30 seconds. Yeah. So now, now you can see the item's aura on the ground, and the range is reduced to 8 meters. I personally think that if they're going to let the survivors see the item on the ground, that the 12 meters should stay. Because I said, I said this when we were talking about the nerfs. If they do both, it's overkill. Because I don't want it to drop out of being a viable perk. Because I think all perk has, it should be viable, you know. Um, And this will, I think, is a little overkill. Because if they can see it, then it's a lot easier to counterplay. Um, okay. Decrease the time it takes to unlock chest to 8 seconds. Oh. Oh my goodness, that's just a buff. That's just a buff to the chest builds that we've been using. <laughs> I, I like this, actually. <laughs> That's a good change. Survivor perk updates. Ace in the hole. When retrieving an item from a chest, there's a 100% chance that an ultra rare or lower add-on will be attached to it. Was very rare or lower. So you can get pink add-ons now, like insta-heals. 
uh, 100% chance of finding add-on of an uncommon rarity or lore was 50%. So you guarantee get two add-ons now. When escaping, keep any items. Yeah, we knew that. Buckle up. Updated the perks description for clarity. Okay. Uh, uh, Weaving Spiders. Description was updated to match the new invocation. Treacherous Crows, but no gameplay change otherwise. Pharmacy. When injured, pharmacy activates removed. On Yes! Oh my god. That... That's how pharmacy used to work, by the way. Pharmacy used to make you open chests 80% faster, whether you were injured or not, and then they reworked it so you always get a med kit multiple times, but then they made it so it only activates when you're injured. So now you will always unlock chests faster. So if you're doing a chest build, I 100% recommend running pharmacy now because you unlock the chest 100% faster. Paired with the new 8 second thing, the chests are going to take 4 seconds. As opposed to them taking like six seconds before. Specialist meta, maybe, with pharmacy. Yeah, because it's 100% faster, was 80, and it's on every chest you unlock. It's not just while you're injured. The hearing distance for noises from unlocking chests are reduced by 20 meters, was 8 meters. Damn, killers are not going to hear you opening them either. So you're going to be able to rummage and... And do anything you want. Pharmacy guarantees an emergency med kit upon completing the interaction. Okay. Plunderer's Instinct. The auras of unopened chest and items in the environment are revealed to you when standing within a 64 meter range. Nice, they doubled the range. They're, they're given... This is all a bunch of like... This, is, this update is for the survivors who love chests. And I'm all for it. This is a great change. This is a great change. Ace in the hole buff. Pharmacy buff. Plunder's instinct buff. Scene partner. Surely they didn't ruin it. Scene partner activates while when you are in the killer's terror radius. Whenever you look at the killer's scream, then see the killer's aura for 6 seconds. Was 5 seconds. Ooh. There is a chance you will scream again. If you do, you will see the killer's aura for an additional 2 seconds. Scene partner then goes on cooldown for 40 seconds. Was 60. Yes, they buffed scene partner so you can scream even more often. <laughs> Not only... Yeah, so they just buffed it. They they buffed it. it. It works the exact same way. However, the cooldown is shorter. You get longer aura reading. <laughs> that's That's perfect. I love it. Survivor bot locomotion. Ooh. Actually, this would be nice to test out if I'm actually going to make videos on this. Uh, fixed missing cracks during the endgame collapse. Any, I'm looking, I want to see if they change anything about Unreal. I'm not going to lie. Floating assets. Brief. Bl bright light. No, no. Okay. Fix an issue that caused the hex to throw the hunt interaction speeds. Speed rallies should be incorrect if cleansed before hex undying. Oh, really? I was wondering why it was so... Okay, that makes sense, actually. Cause the death on perk to not be disabled when grabbed by the killer. Devour hope to gain a token when survivor self unhooks with a deliverance perk. Oh, I didn't know about that. Um, okay. Uh, fix... Oh, <laughs> Kamui, fix an issue that caused Laura Croft's prestige outfits to unlock in the wrong order. <laughs> you told me about that, and I was like, yeah, that's weird. <laughs> so that was a bug. Thraith is now correctly able to move and attack after doing certain interactions when using the serpent. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, God. The Nightmare and the Skull Merchant are disabled for the course of this PT. What? Why? Worst PTB ever, <laughs> yeah. The search path can appear above the ground when search command sends the dog to a different elevation. Search path can appear above the ground when Okay. While running on the search path, the Houndmaster very rarely does not earn the movement speed bonus. Survivors performing the grab rescue interaction on another survivor will play the corresponding animation after rescued survivor is freed from the dog instead of during the ongoing interaction. Survivors involved in a grab display the broken status effect symbol instead of the incapacitated status effect symbol. The Houndmaster is missing her dog during the match result screen. The Houndmaster's dog position is desynced 
with the survivor during the mori when performing multiple interactions. The collision of the Houndmaster's dog prevents the killer from being blinded by flashlights. The Houndmaster's dog visually does not always complete the vault animation, but still continues the path. Frequently, the clean break perk does not trigger while being healed by another survivor that also has the clean break perk equipped. Okay, so that is a no. That's a good thing to know. Um, I think Kamui, what we do is we cover everything from here, the survivor HUD improvements in these killer updates. And we keep this for like a separate video, or maybe that's the video we upload first because it's really quick and it's already recorded there, like this. And then what I'll do now is I'll go and record gameplay explaining the perks in-game and showcasing the killer.